Hello, Algebra 2. Hope you guys are having a new wonderful day. Um, today we're going to talk about the quadratic formula, which I know is a review for most of you, I think. Um, but, you know, it's part of Algebra 2, so here we go. <laughs> um, quadratic formula. Okay, first of all, let's remember, how are all of, what are all of the different ways that we've found zeros so far. Um, so see if you can come up with a, a couple different ways, right? Remember zeros are your x-intercepts or set the function equal to zero. Um, we have lots of different methods for finding them. Um, first one, we've graphed functions. We've um, used tables. We if it's factorable, we have factored. Um, if it's not factorable, we have completed the square and then solved for x. Uh, what else? What else have we done? We've also used square roots and the square root property. Okay, so here's the question, right? What if it doesn't factor well, or completing the square is like insane and it's so difficult or really tedious? Um, what do you do? Or if you can't graph it and you figure out that, you know, they're imaginary roots and so you can't find it on a graph or a table, um, and you can't factor it, right? There's some, some functions that it's just not pretty to solve with the methods that we've had so far. So that's why the quadratic formula is helpful, okay? Because if you start out with a function in standard form, okay, that's crucial. You start out in standard form, then, right, so if you start with the, it has to start in standard form. And if it's not in standard form, then this isn't going to work. you got to put it in standard form in order for it to work. Okay, um, so if you are trying to find the zeros, you have 0 equals ax squared plus bx plus c. Then the quadratic formula works. And does anybody remember the quadratic formula? So in case you forgot it, this girl knows it. equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Thank you, Emily. All right. I mean, it's literally just a formula. Then you just plug in the values and simplify. Simplifying is probably the hardest part about this. But anyways, so try number one and check your answers. All right, find the zeros of a function. All right, step one, set it equal to zero. Step two, you got to figure out what a, b, and c are. Well, in this case, a is 2, b is what's ever in front of x, so in that case that's negative 1, and c is the last term, which is positive 2. So, when we use the quadratic formula, you get x equals negative b, so negative negative 1, positive 1, plus or minus the square root b squared is negative 1 squared, which is 1, minus 4 times a, which is 2, times c, which is another 2, and all over 2 times a, and a is 2. So we plug that in and simplify. So, you have 1 plus or minus square root of 1 minus 4 times 2 times 2. So that's 16. So negative 15, 1 minus 16 is negative 15, over 4. Simplify that a little bit. Square root of a negative number 
is uh, you've got 1 plus or minus i times the square root of 15. 15 doesn't have any perfect squares in it, so you can leave it as uh, 15. And so your answers, um, your zeros are 1 plus i root 15 over 4 and 1 minus i root 15 over 4. And box it, and you're done. Yay! Sometimes all you need to know is how many roots you have, how many zeros you have, and whether or not they're imaginary. So, um, there's a nice fast check to see if you, how many zeros you have for a quadratic, and also um, what type they are. Okay, so if you think about the quadratic formula, right, x equals negative b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a, right? Which part of this equation will tell us whether the parabola has 1, 2, or 0 x-intercepts? Okay, which are real zeros, right? Same thing as real zeros. Try to think of it this way, right? If the stuff under the square root, if that equals zero, right, then that whole thing goes away. And you don't even have it as part of the equation, right? It's just negative b plus or minus zero, which is whatever, all over 2a. Right? So how many zeros does it have? Well, in this case, there's only one. So if d equals zero, if the discriminant, which is the stuff under the square root, if that equals zero, it's just a fancy name for it, if that equals zero, you only have one real x-intercept, one real zero. If the stuff under the square root, which is, again, called the discriminant, Right? If that stuff is positive or greater than zero, is another way to think about that. If it's positive, then you have the square root of a positive number. You've got negative b plus or minus the square root of a positive number over 2a. In this case, you're going to have two real zeros. And lastly, what if that whole thing was negative? Okay, if the stuff under the square root is negative or less than zero, then you have the square root of a negative number, in which case, then you have imaginary zeros. So, sometimes all you need to look at is the discriminant, which is b squared minus 4ac. So I'll write all that down for you. So just a reminder, the discriminant equals b squared minus 4ac, the stuff under the square root. If it is equal to 0, then the quadratic has one real 0. If d is positive, then the quadratic has two real zeros. And if the discriminant is negative, then the quadratic has to have two imaginary or complex zeros. Okay, so there's three examples at the bottom. Um, find the type and number of solutions for each equation. So you just need to tell me how many there are, and are they imaginary or, imaginary or are they real? Okay, so in the first one, x squared minus 4x uh, equals negative 4. First you need to, you know, move everything over to one side so that you get it in standard form, right? Because the quadratic formula doesn't work unless you're in standard form. So we have x squared minus 4x plus 4 equals 0, and now um, we just need the discriminant. Remember, the discriminant is the stuff under the square root in the quadratic formula, so that's b squared minus 4ac. So, in this case, b is negative 4, so that's, um, I have negative 4 squared minus 4 times a, and a in this case is whatever's in front of x squared, so that is 1 times c, and c in this case is, oops, 
I just erased it, is instead of highlighting, it is positive 4. Okay, so then you multiply all that out, figure out if it's positive, negative, or equal to 0. So, so you've got 16 minus 16. Well, that equals 0. Since it's 0, we know we have one real 0 to the yeah, equation. Yay! All right, try the next two. Number two, t same situation, x squared minus 4x plus 8 equals 0. You want to move everything over to one side. And then find the discriminant. The discriminant is um, b squared minus 4ac. b is negative 4. So that's 16. Negative 4 squared is 16. Minus 4 times a, which is 1, times c, which is positive 8. So now I've got 16 minus 4 times 1 times 8, which is 32. So this is a negative number. That's less than 0. So that's the most important part. right? It doesn't actually matter what it actually equals, just that it's negative. And so because it's negative, you know that the stuff under the square root would be negative, so you're taking the square root of a negative number, which only gives you an imaginary answer. So, again, in this case, we know we have two imaginary zeros. Last one, x squared minus 4x minus 2 equals 2. Bring the 2 over, you've got x squared minus 4x minus 2 equals 0. Then you've got b squared, which is 16, minus 4 times a, which is 1, times c, which is negative 2. And you've got 16 minus a negative number, negative 8. Again, doesn't matter what it is, but basically you have 16 plus 8, so you know that's going to be positive, greater than 0. And because of that, you know you have two real zeros. And that's it. Good job. All right, see you later.